Up 20 things only 90 kids will understand. The 90s kids will understand. Let's see who all, like, let's see how much stuff that everybody remembers. I was born in 92. Chat, where, where are you guys born? Like, what year were y'all born? Some of y'all will probably be like, uh, 97. Some may remember, some may not remember. We'll see. Yeah, I was a 92's kid. 31 right now. 31 years old. Ain't that something? This, this is 31. Yeah, I mean, I can say it. 31. Crazy. All right. Let's get into it. This one up 350 and up 450 and up $900. Welcome Beanie to Babies. Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 things only 90s kids will understand. All right. I'm ready. Capri Suns. Respect Wait. the pouch. Res yeah. Okay. That's one. Okay. I think I'm good. People would drink the Capri Sun. I ran out of Capri Suns. Damn. Um, but yeah, people would drink it and then blow it up and then they would step on it. And they're like, hey, respect the pouch. And they're like, yeah, whatever. And then they step on it and blow up. Respect it. I remember it. For this That's list, fun. we're looking at the things from the 1990s that those who grew up during the decade either remember or fully comprehend. If there's a distinctly 90s thing you're distinctly oh upset God, we forgot, remind us in the comments. Number 20, Moon Shoes. Kids love bouncing up and down, Yo. as parents and mattresses everywhere can attest. I just gotta get moon boots. And while trampolines Arthur. are arguably the most popular way for kids to leap in this way, there have been more portable attempts. Yeah. Like a moon while moon shoes. Bruh. Dude, it's either. Okay, so it, there was a tier. There was a whole tier that, that was with, uh, with all this. You have a trampoline. You have the trampoline. If you cannot afford the trampoline, you get the moon shoes. If you can't afford the moon shoes, guess what you got? You got the pogo stick. If you're going to get for that. Well, you better come up with imagination. You better jump with your with the with the energy that you have. You would just jump. You would just just <laughs> uh, eventually you'd probably hurt your knees, like my like me, my ankles. Um, but yeah, and remember back then, like th this is how you know the '90s and before were good. It's because they would have a jingle with every single commercial that they had. Moon shoes. Yeah. While moon shoes have existed in some form since as early as the 1950s, the 90s saw Nickelodeon improve the safety of this product by making them from plastic and using bungee springs. Mm -hmm. And while they may have been cheaper than trampolines, moon shoes often led to just as many injuries, usually to the ankles or knees. Yep. You but that shatter didn't your stop ankles. us from hopping around our neighborhoods or trying for a fabled double bounce on a bed or trampoline. Yep. I promised I'd get all the leaves. Number 19, the pain when your CD got scratched. This one is still oh. somewhat relevant today since some video games still use discs. Yes. But back in the 90s, discs were everywhere, particularly CDs for music. Oh, your CD's skipping. I'm gonna watch TV instead. Oh. And keeping them clean and free of scratches was a And then, and then if you were in the, some of those, some people, I mean, I wasn't old enough at the time, but people that are in a relationship and like, they would and like, you know, man, woman, whoever, they would argue and then they'd grab a CD and they just like, like you want, like, don't you dare. And then you hear the, and it's, oh, ooh, that made people want to go to jail. I know people would go to jail for that. Ooh, ooh. Practiced art. If it did happen, skipping audio was the least of the issues it caused. We tried everything we could to repair them from banana peels to toothpaste. Finding a replacement wasn't as easy so back then, alcohol since too. who knew if the local record store still carried it? Plus, we only had so much allowance or summer job money to spend. Ah! My Liza Minnelli CDs are gone! Number 18, the taste of victory after opening a yep. Capri Sun correctly. Juice boxes come in many shapes and sizes, but the most infamous is Capri Sun for one simple reason, the difficulty in putting the straw in. Capri These juice pouches have a small straw target a set thing. vertically near the top, along with a sharp straw meant to pierce it more easily. Unfortunately, opening them correctly proved as difficult for many of us as kids Did as solving a Rubik's Cube. Did you Sorry, these Capri Suns are notoriously difficult to open. 
The straws always bent or you got the wrong angle. Some even tried going in from the bottom. No matter the method, we usually ended up spilling juice on ourselves. Yeah. Why is this soaked? Did the Capri Sun explode back here? But when we got it just right, ooh, that just made Capri Sun taste like ambrosia. Number. Yeah, but then the downside to this whole thing with, with Capri Suns is you put it in, you're like, oh, yeah. And then you drink it like within 0.5 seconds and it's already gone. And you're just like, oh. But then, chat, I don't know if anybody else does it. I don't, yeah, I don't know if anybody else did it. But who else, like, during a hot summer day would just put the Capri Suns in the freezer and then wait the next day? You know you're going to go outside and everything. You put the uh, you, you put in the freezer and everything, and, you, you know, like, you're outside, you're playing football, whatever. You come back inside. It's already hot. You're, like, burning up. You're just, like, you could feel the heat just coming off your skin and everything. And you go to the freezer and you open up that frozen Capri Sun, you cut it open with some scissors and then you eat it like a popsicle. Damn. Those were the days. Those were the days. All right. What's the next one? Here's the next one. Number 17, the cool S. There are a surprising cool number S. of 90s experiences oh, stussy, relating to the, the, writing we could have the, discussed the, the, instead. The like losing the tip S. of your push point pencil. No! Or how to hone your skills with a light bright. But one thing that. we all did in school is draw that cool S. The to draw the S. S, all you have to do is draw three vertical lines on top of three vertical and lines, went crazy and, connect went 3D them, with it. and draw points at the top and bottom. Yes. It's a universal symbol that can be found the world over and has been around for decades, even before the 90s. However, yeah, we knows argue that the symbol's popularity exploded in public consciousness during the 1990s. Number 16, the specific cheesiness of Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen movies. Abracadabra. <laughs> the Olsen twins may have spent most yeah. of their adult lives trying to forget their childhood careers, but we can't forget and we never will. Their movie starred the two sisters in what was seemingly some version of themselves, often with one of them being sporty and the other one being bookish. The Font Alexander. You know, a bridge built for the 1900 True. exhibition. It presents Paris at its grandest. <laughs> well, at least that's what it says in the book. I didn't really they get watch kidnapped the movie, or trade places, or maybe they were amateur sleuths. Their parents were usually absent or unseen, and they were free to hang out with cute boys in exotic locales all over the world. I don't know when I'll see you again, Melanie. Well, when the video heads get famous, maybe you'll tour LA. The movies didn't make much sense. Yeah. It, yeah, it didn't make sense because now I'm starting to think about it. Where the hell were their parents? <laughs> Where the hell were their parents at? Like, oh, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave my kid. They're gonna go do all this stuff, and then I'll I'll see them later. Like, or they just realize, hey, my kid is not here. Damn. And the funny thing is, that's something that we were like, as kids, we're like, dude, that'd be so cool to do. And then our parents were like. No, no, I ain't gonna let you do that. <laughs> but that didn't stop us from watching them on repeat. <laughs> Number uh, no, wow, no, like no, no bully, no bully, right? One of the, I didn't watch the Mary Kate, the Mary Kate and Ashley movie, whatever. I ain't gonna lie. The one I I will say that I watched was the Parent Trap, the one with Lindsay Lohan. And she had like it was a double. I literally thought as a kid, I thought Lindsay Lohan had a, had a twin. Deck design to choose for Windows 95 Solitaire. Microsoft Windows was and still is one of the biggest operating systems out there. Windows 95 came equipped with several games everyone played to death. Hell yeah. Whether you were working in an office or a kid just learning how to play on the computer. And Solitaire was usually the go to due to how easy and fast paced it is. Solitaire? Hell yeah. Yeah, free sale. Office. Six on seven. I know I saw that. So the money. I still can't play solitaire. I'm saving that because I like it when the cards go. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> but what we took our time with was choosing which card backs to use. Are we feeling tropical with a beach design or elegant with the roses or vines? The castle evokes mystery. And who doesn't love a robot? These are the kind of decisions True. you need to make if you were going to play the game for just five minutes that became an hour. Hey, you know what I feel like Sabrina doing now? the Teenage Witch. Playing solitaire. Number 14, Beanie Babies Mania. 
These bean stuffed toys are actually no, no, no. This was a this this was a tra this was a trap. This was a trap. With beanie babies, you guys remember, like as a kid, you wanted to rip the tag off of the ear. Like it's usually on the ear. You want to rip the tag off, throw it away, and then play with the beanie baby, right? And your parents told you, don't do that. How many of y'all actually removed the tag just to play with it? I did, and it was a grave mistake because now Beanie Babies are worth like a good amount of money, especially the first batch that came out. Like I think it was like the bear and stuff, um, and they have the tag on the ear still. It's still worth it's worth a lot of money, a good amount of money actually. I want I want to say a lot, but it's worth a good amount of money. It's a pretty penny, I'd say that. That's crazy. Really still around. However, their popularity today pales in comparison to how omnipresent they were during the 90s. The biggest toy craze in they had names. They would just lunge and grab. Because the company that made them created deliberate scarcity by retiring certain animals, the resale value on them was gigantic yeah. and created a huge demand among adults and teens. There were people out there who were buying the beanies, and this was their livelihood. But kids loved them too. They were everywhere. The Rainbow there were Flamingo. Baby magazines. They were oh, the arguably oh, the, the first Pelican? internet phenomenon. Goldie! We don't have Goldie! Yes! <laughs> they were in Happy Meals. And sure, yep. as kids, we probably devalued them by playing with them, but yep. we didn't know any better. Yep. Number 13, waiting for dial-up internet. Oh! Kids today have it so much easier. Oh my gosh! Where is it? I think I still have it. Who remembers this noise? that that coming up and then when you hear that static at the end if you pick up the phone and you hear that static at the end that means somebody's on the internet <laughs> you had a if you're upstairs on the computer on aol on aim talking to your friend and then somebody picks up the phone and starts dialing oh and it causes interference you're like why am i being disconnected you had to run downstairs and be like get off the phone or if you're trying to be on the phone and somebody gets on the internet you have to go upstairs and yell at them get off the internet I'm on the phone. Oh, it's internet. Oh goodness. This is when internet started. Here when it comes to the internet. Back in our day, wow, we're becoming our parents, aren't we? Yeah. Using the internet wasn't as simple as opening a browser. Yeah. We had to wait for it every step of the way. We had to access it using a phone line, so we had to block off time when no one was using the phone in our houses. Yep. Then we had to listen to that screeching dial-up internet noise that's ingrained in all of our heads forever while connecting to America Online. Yep. <laughs> yes! Uh, dunk, dunk. <laughs> and loading websites when I just way did. too, since internet speeds moved as slow as a snail through molasses. Remember that the next time your internet is a little slow. Yeah. Up, I'm a busy man. Before gigs and terabytes of freaking internet. Number 12. The subtle art of putting multiple VHSs in Blockbuster's Dropbox and the fear that they didn't get through. The whole VHS experience is something many kids these days don't get. They'll never know what it was like to rent a videotape from Blockbuster or how we had to be reminded to be kind rewind. We didn't rewind it. There's a $2 charge for not rewinding. <laughs> Bruh. Oh, man, I miss Blockbuster so much. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, mm, I miss it. I miss Blockbuster so much. <sighs> Friday night, my mom would 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 get us. Would, would, would come up and, and like rally up the boys. Miles, Marquis, Steven, come to my room. Run the room. Write down a list or you guys agree upon a game or agree upon something, right? Or get in the car. We're going to Blockbuster. We already knew. What's going to happen back then? And I'm talking about this is Nintendo 64, Xbox. I think there was a PlayStation and GameCube, but we just went from it was either Nintendo 64 or, or an Xbox. And that was on the good days. My mom would go rent a movie. We go find two games to rent and for Xbox for sure. And she's like, go rent, go, go to the Xbox section. And we're like, we don't have an Xbox. We go rent two games. It was, it, it was one of these four games. Halo Combat Evolved, Fusion Frenzy, NFL Fever, 2002, 2003, SSX Tricky, snowboarding game. 
those four games. Actually, no, there's five because then there's Project Gotham Racing. Those five games, we we pick two games, bring it up to the counter. My mom would say, oh, we want to rent this Xbox. They put the Xbox in the case. It was like it looked it looked like a Pelican case. I guess it was like the the grandfather of a, of a Pelican case. It was before Pelican cases were out. I think open up the case, check the, the wires in there, the two Xbox controllers, and I'm not talking about the little baby controllers. I'm not talking about the ones we got now, the little baby ones. I'm talking about Duke. Talking about the big one where the buttons were like a actual like an actual diamond. Hold on, let me find the let me find it. This bad boy right here. This is the Duke. This is what we called it. Oh, we didn't call it the Duke. This was the original controller. And it don't matter if your hands were tiny. Well, you better learn. You better learn how to play it. Also, the D-pad was pretty crazy how they had they had that mapped out and everything. You still got the LBRB flashlight swap grenades, and then then the thumbsticks were different too. And then you had the cool D-pad. This was actually just. A sticker that was put put inside and then they put like the thing over there so you can't rip off the sticker the engraved the the, in, the engraved uh microsoft and this was back and start i remember it used to be you know it went from select to start now it's back to to start and now it's the weird boxes and lines we had to make sure it was one specific xbox that we got because we did it we rented that xbox out like i don't know how many how many times for like months but when we rented out the Xbox, it was called uh, it was called Saucy. Only how we know it was Saucy is because we had to get Halo for sure, just to verify this was the correct Xbox that we were playing all our games on. Because we had so many saved files. Boot up Halo. Everybody knows Halo, the original Halo. We all know it. We will go to multiplayer. This is where it's gonna really show. I'm just gonna say this now. This is where it's really gonna show with people. You go to multiplayer on Halo Combat Evolve. You hit, obviously, you hit LAN because. Or you hit local because there's local and land and that's for our system link there's local system link you hit local and then it will show the xbox and it will show a name under it that's how you know your xbox had as a name is only through halo and because of that name my name on on ea for a long time was saucy that's how long it's been since i've had an ea account anyway let's get back at this okay super, super sidetracked i'm just so excited signs here this is an outrage what are the blockbuster was, we was, rewound was those it. tapes getting them back to the sorry one last thing also october going into a blockbuster or a hollywood view oh it was like a party in there everybody's in there getting a nightmare on elm street scream halloween texas chainsaw massacre anything and it was on the vhs tapes to the store was often more complicated than just holding down the rewind button on our players Sure, you could go in the store and return the tapes, but who had the time? The Dropbox was right there. Cramming multiple tapes in at once was a puzzle in itself, since they were always getting stuck. And if they did get stuck, you'd get slapped with a late fee faster than you get. OK, sorry, you get stuck. But also the reason why this stopped happening is because people would drop the um, would drop it in there. And at some random point, the tape that is laying flat and the one that comes in smacks on top of the tape and somehow cracks the tape, then you get charged for a damage of block, uh, blockbuster property. And also, by the way, this is still the best uniform ever. Nobody has this. Whoever still has this, oh my goodness, I would pay, I'd, honestly, I'd give you a hundred bucks for the t-shirt. If I can get a blockbuster employee t-shirt, I'd pay a hundred dollars for it. Since they were always getting stuck. And you had the tag and with your name on get it. stuck, you'd get slapped with a late fee faster than you could say, bummer, dude. Number 11, Raising Tamagotchis. During the 90s, digital pets were all the rage with kids. Don't forget your Giga Pet! Whoa, Doggies, Madonna's hungry! Don't upset your Giga Pet! And while Giga Pets also made a big splash, there's no beating the recognition of Tamagotchi. This is how These you virtual tell if pets you were able to raise kids. These virtual pets came in distinctive egg-shaped games. You gonna get a dog? Oh, are you hungry? Oh, no, 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 no. By you got one of these. Feed it. Looking after these low-pixel creatures could feel like a full-time job way back when, as we like took them from eggs into various new forms as they changed, depending on how well we took care of them. It's, it's probably hungry. Whoever left it behind must not care too much. Can I have it? And there's a special level of panic when you realize you haven't fed yours and it's in danger of dying, which they did frequently. I'm so sorry. I was up all night. All my money got stolen and I haven't had a clock since my Tamagotchi died. Uh-uh. This is strike three. Number 10. The adrenaline rush of hearing the Fresh Prince theme. Oh, yeah, I remember that. 
most adult thing kids are exposed to on TV. And in the early 90s, every kid's favorite was definitely the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yes. Will Smith was, and still is to many of us, the absolute epitome of cool. And his show had all the same charisma and hilarity that he delivered. Like, 90s was good because it was, the style was everything that was very pop and radiant. That's what it was. Everything, everything was very popping and, and radiant. Whether it was crazy patterns and stuff or like just lines, that's what it was. That was the style. Now it's, I don't know what it is. When class wasn't class. Schools today Yo. have a lot more options when it comes to teaching and engaging kids. However, Bro, during recess? the 90s, school could feel like a lot of the same day in and day out, at least for students. So we learned to savor those times when class didn't feel like class. Any day game of heads up, seven up during class, a game of parachute during PE, or the excitement we got when the teacher wheeled in a TV from the AV club. Oh, These were the moments we lived bus. for when going to school. Because watching Bill Nye the Science Guy never felt like a chore. Bill, 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 Bill Nye, Nye the Science Guy. Number eight, needing the snazziest school supplies. The oh, 90s yeah. were all about colors on everything. See? As kids, the louder and more colorful you could be, the, the cooler, cooler you, are. you were. Because of Fresh Prince. Whatever. It's because of Fresh Prince. All right. Okay. This extended not only to bigger school items like backpacks, we're looking at you, Lisa Frank, but also the things we kept inside them. Wait, we is that wrote Miley? and is that drew using Kuzis? single pens that dispensed multiple colors, milky gel pens for dark paper, and even markers with mini stamps. We didn't just have Elmer's glue. We had it in gel form, yep. and we had it all in space maker pencil boxes, yep. complete with a transparent lid. And then if it broke, number seven, you know. outdoor toys that had to be different. Ooh. Whoever came up with some of the toys during the '90s was definitely thinking outside of the toy box. Most of them were new spins on familiar concepts. I just gotta get moon boots. Bicycle spoke decorations have been around since bikes were invented, yep. but specifically made beads? That was a new one. The cards, and sure, the everyone's cards played the thing. with a baseball, but how about one that's green and has a Velcro catcher's mitt? Bro, or how about back. a skipping rope, but instead it's made of plastic and attached to one of your feet and counts your skips like a Fitbit? And While it, there are the plenty of weird toys today, we do miss these ones from our youth. Yeah. Three different electronic skippets, three different this. sounds, each sold separately, skip it. not included. Oh. Number six, how to fold a paper fortune teller and how much worth you put into what it said. Okay, these things may have been around for practically a century, but they yeah. were very important to us during the 90s, dang it. It has the power to tell fortunes. This, this whole, th this little thing right here ruined people's lives if you pick the wrong one. You know, you picked, like, you, you'd be like, you know, you pick the first one, you're like, okay, cool, done, move on. Next kid plays it, okay, got a good one, moves on. Or they got an okay one, moves on. One, uh, like, the final kid opens up the red one gets a bad fortune and then they're like no i want let me try it again let me get another one oh my goodness it was so bad but then we had one kid that was super smart that knew like how it worked they're like one two three four five okay i want red no, 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 no. and they knew which one they were gonna get it was and we thought that person was a magician like a like they were the fortune teller the teller it was crazy when given to a special girl on her half birthday. I'm sure. Can I have half a piece of cake now? Back in the day, we knew how to fold these things just right and knew exactly what to put in them to embarrass our friends. And despite knowing that our friends made them from paper, there was something mystical about the process of uncovering our fortune to the point where we're still embarrassed. Only now it's of how much stock we put into their outcomes. Oh my God, it says we like so-and-so? There's no way that's true, right? Plus it was better than MASH. Now there's a game to end friendships. Uh, you know what be Should we? <clears throat> no, like anybody that sees this video and you guys, you have to come back and like, and, and, and let me know how it works out. Anybody, like what content that would be popping right now, especially if you're trying to bring things back, bring back the fortune, the fortune uh, thing. Bring that back, do a TikTok. Just go up to people and be like, hey, remember this thing? And, then, and people would be like, oh, hell yeah. And be like, all right, Pick a number or no, pick a color. Red, you know, R E D. All right, pick a number. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Uh pick a uh was I think it was like pick a another number or pick a number again. And they say like five. And you open it up and you're like, you, you, yeah, you pick it up and you'd be like, you're gonna want McDonald's French fries or something like that. Just put something in there. 
it'd be funny. Don't not nothing harmful or anything, but do something like that. I bet you you're gonna get a shit ton of views because people from the '90s are gonna remember that. People that are, I guess, kids now they're gonna be like, "What the hell is that?" And then they're gonna show their parents the TikTok, and then you're like, "Oh shit, I remember that as a kid." Type of thing. Whoever it is, whoever it is, content idea. Damn. Stop listening to you. I can't yes. do it because I can't fold that shit. Definitely. <laughs> Free at last! Number five, the weird experimental foods and the struggle of getting your parents to get them for you. As we've seen already, the 90s were a time of experimentation with new concepts, and that extended to food as well. So fruity, they'll really turn your head. Whoa, I'll say. The decade saw bizarre gushers. sweets and snacks like Gushers, Lifesavers Holes, Butterfinger BBs, and Cheesecake Jello Cups. Strange drinks like Squeeze-Its, patently unhealthy cereals like Oreo O's, Reptar yeah. Crunch, Cookie Crisp, and Rice Krispies Treat Cereal, and yep. soft drink experiments like Crystal Pepsi. Yes! Truly, it was a renaissance for the food. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I know it's probably like, two, it was like in 2000s, but Pepsi Blue. Pepsi Blue was it too. Food industry. But did that make it any easier for us to convince our parents to buy a cereal that turned our tongues green? No. Some people just don't understand art. Number four, how much a slap bracelet can hurt. Slap bracelets were a major fad during the 90s. They, used to they generally took the form of bendable metal bracelets with colorful plastic or soft coverings and that could snap between being straight yep. lines and Put conforming straight to the shape of your wrist. While they are still around today, they're not quite as mm, sturdy as they used to be. Are they? Snapping one onto yourself or someone this else one. sure is fun. These plastic and ones. It looks totally trendy, but it could seriously hurt if done hard enough. They are made of metal after all. It we can't hurt. see it's why some scary. schools took to banning them, even if we would have taken the bruises to remain fashionable at the time. Number three, how no games will come close to how good 90s ones are. Yeah. Colorful items would never have been made during the 90s without some equally Mouse colorful trap. ideas. And some of the more bizarre and awesome ones were about board games. 90s games were as strange and extreme as everything else during the decade. And then the fact that How they added cartoons games to like it. Dream Phone, a game similar to Clue, except the objective was to find out who had a crush on you. It's Dan! Dan, my man! You're right. I really like you. Yes! <laughs> Dream Phone, the hot electronic talking phone game. It's for you! Or how about 13 Dead End Drive, where players fight over a major inheritance by trying to permanently get rid of the other players with traps. Wild, right? Yes. Like a mafia. Dead end drive. It's pretty much Number like two, it's pretty the much mafia. need for everything to be light up, color, color changing, bright. especially purple or inflatable. We've already touched a few times on how colorful and bright everything in the, the 90s Heinz was, ketchup, but yeah. not only did everything have to be colorful, but it had to change colors too. Foods that changed colors were popular. Heck, sunscreen even sold by making it seem to kids like it would change their skin tone to weird shades. It totally crazy. All right. Well, uh, I swear I'm trying not to do it this whole, so many times. But okay, <clears throat> it's still in stores now. But the 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 peanut butter jelly in a jar, like it's it, there, it's both peanut butter and jelly in one jar, and you can see it's like there's the peanut butter, there's jelly, peanut butter jelly, and it's like it goes all around. It's like a, almost looks like an umbrella pattern of just peanut butter and jelly. I never got that. I know I could buy it right now and then just like you know put it on I'll, I'll like put the spread on there and it was just to eliminate the hassle of oh you gotta take the take out the jelly and you gotta put out peanut butter and then put it on there it just it, it just defeated the purpose of that which was awesome i heard that it some people say like it, it just wasn't it didn't taste the same and also let me know in the comments below when you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich do you do peanut butter first then the jelly or do you do jelly first and then the peanut butter didn't much to our disappointment. It's new Coppertone Kids Color Block, the world's first disappearing purple sunblock. Purple, so you can't miss a spot. Business spot. Rub it in, and the purple disappears. Everything had to be light up too, from sneakers to yo-yos. Yo if it wasn't illuminated, it was only half as cool. See, Plus, RGB was cool back then. stuff, including chairs and toys, was very popular. If yeah. we surrounded ourselves with this stuff now we'd probably look crazy. But in the 90s, we were just trying to stay hip. Hey, Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel crazy and the ring new, the bell to the get notified thing. about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Damn. 
Number one, how insanely loud the THX logo is. Yes. Yeah, sure, we've got specialty theaters these I mean, days with lots of surround me, sound and tons me. of output, but back Play in it. the 90s, Play THX it. was the name and sound for movies. Play it. I got you the big screen TV, deluxe karaoke machine, and THX quality sound that would make George Lucas cream in his pants. And before many movies, the THX logo would appear, along with its signature resonant <laughs> sound that's so freaking loud you can feel it in your chest. Bam. Turn it off! Turn it off! It's a sound oh, and experience so memorable that. that if you hummed it in public, people would know exactly what you were referencing and they might cover their ears reflexively. In the or because you're making acoustic. a weird noise in public. But definitely one of the two. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. Do you agree with our picks? Yes. Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be oh, oh, that was so good. Oh man, what a great video. You gotta do more of those. But what did you guys think about? It? Did you guys have flashback of memories? Because I did. Man, that was that was sometimes. Let me know if you guys think should should some of this stuff come back? Because I know I would. I would have fun with this. And uh, we might be a lunatic, you know. So let me know in the comments down below as well. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.